Hello and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims and these are the top diabetes stories and headlines of the past seven days. As always, I'm gonna link up my sources in the Facebook comments where we are live this Wednesday, August 25th, 2021, and in the show notes at diabetes-connections.com when this airs as a podcast, so you can read more if you want, whenever you want. In the News is brought to you by Real Good Foods. Find them in your local grocery store, Target, or Costco, real food you feel good about eating. Our top stories this week, number of young people with type 2 nearly doubled in the United States from 2001 to 2017. These researchers found significant increases in all types of diabetes among both sexes and across racial and ethnic groups. Type 1 diabetes remains more common among white youth. The highest rates of type 2 diabetes were seen in younger people who are Black or Native American. It's interesting that the CDC and NIH researchers say they don't know the cause of the huge increase here in type 2. They talk about rising obesity, but they wonder what's behind that. They also wonder if it's because increased screenings, the environment, or maybe something else. A big change recommended in screening for adults with type 2, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force now recommends screening for people who are overweight starting at age 35. That's five years earlier than recommended right now, and it would include 40% of the U.S. adult population. Now, this task force recommends screenings that insurance companies must completely cover without out-of-pocket costs to the insured under the Affordable Care Act. FDA approval for GVOC kit to treat severe hypoglycemia. Xeris Pharmaceuticals already provides Givoke Glucagon as an auto-injector and a pre-filled syringe. This kit is for patients who prefer to drop their own doses of glucagon using a vial and syringe. You don't have to mix anything. It's still a ready-to-use liquid glucagon, shelf-stable. Could be helpful to those who prefer mini glucagon doses, which are not FDA approved, but are sometimes used during illness or other times. Note, this is my comment. Xeris and the FDA are not talking about mini glucagon dosing at all. Growing numbers of pregnant women are developing gestational diabetes. Between 2011 and 2019, rates of gestational diabetes in the U.S. jumped 30 percent, according to a large nationwide study of first-time moms. Now, the cause not clear, like the other study. Every age group, though, did see an increase from age 15 to 44, so it's not just moms getting older, which is happening. These researchers want to look at non-traditional risk factors like stress, and this was a huge study, 13 million moms in the U.S. In the let's call this the no thank you department, researchers say they've got an implanted pump you would refill just by swallowing a capsule. The catch, if that wasn't it, first they have to implant the pump, which is described as the size of a flip phone along the abdominal wall interfaced with the small intestine. Now that refill capsule is magnetic, so the implant draws the capsule toward it. It then punches the capsule with a retractable needle and pumps the insulin into its reservoir. The needle must also punch through a thin layer of intestinal tissue to reach the capsule. These Italian developers testing it all out have done so only in pigs. They say it controlled blood glucose successfully for several hours. Another maybe it'll work item, Israeli startup Hagar has something called G-Wave technology that measures blood sugar levels using non-invasive radio waves. The prototype puts the tech into a ceramic bracelet and uses Bluetooth to transmit readings to a mobile app with display and alert functions. Proof of concept study founded um, a proof of concept study found the company's radio frequency technology was able to continuously measure glucose levels with at least 90% accuracy compared to the estimated 70% rate for traditional continuous glucose monitors. And they claim that's because it measures glucose in real time. Hagar now plans to launch clinical trials to pursue FDA approval. More to come, but first I want to tell you about one of our great sponsors who helps make Diabetes Connections possible. It's Real Good Foods, where the mission is be real good. They make nutritious foods, grain-free, high in protein, never added sugar, and from real ingredients. I was in Target this week and I saw the new entree bowls. I bought the lemon chicken and the lasagna. 
the lemon chicken was great. It uses hearts of palm pasta instead of regular noodles, which I thought sounded kind of odd, but it tasted really good. Uh, they keep adding to the menu line. By the way, I didn't try the lasagna yet. You can buy online or find a store near you with their locator right on the website. I will put a link in the Facebook comments and as always at diabetes-connections.com. Back to the news now, and a big grant goes to Scripps Whittier Diabetes Institute to study the use of CGMs in hospitalized patients with type 2. This is a $3.1 million grant from the NIH, and it's to build on research going on now during the COVID-19 pandemic. CGM devices have been approved for outpatient use since 1999, but their use in the hospital setting remains limited to research efforts and the special conditions we've talked about that are allowed now during the pandemic. Big congrats to Diversity in Diabetes for their newly minted 501c3 status. This group was founded last summer. It's dedicated to creating awareness and providing solutions to end health disparities and the lack of representation in the diabetes space. Their big event, People of Color Living with Diabetes Virtual Summit, kicks off on September 16th. More info and how to register in the show notes. Please join me wherever you get your podcasts for our next episode on Tuesday, we're talking to the folks from Mankind, the makers of Afreza inhalable insulin. You had a lot of questions for them. Looking forward to that episode. And the one out right now is with Kyle Banks, a Broadway performer who was diagnosed with type 1 while acting in The Lion King. And that is in the news for this week. If you like it, please share it. And if you're watching this replay on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're listening via the audio podcast, please follow. Whatever it's called, I appreciate you being here. Thanks so much for joining me.